sleep. I'll get you up later. Oh, I have to get up. I have to help mom with the kids. You go over there at this hour, and they're going to still be in bed. Is it that early? It's earlier. Oh, good. <clears throat> I have something else on your mind. <clears throat> yeah. There was something on my mind. What? The future. I just think that the sooner we make some definite changes, the easier it's going to be for both of us. I agree. It's just a matter of getting organized. I just feel so dislocated. I mean, you're here and the children are over at Mom's and I keep running back and forth between both places. Well, we'll get an apartment as soon as something comes up. Then it's a matter of finding a site for the gallery and that's just a matter of finding a location. How do you feel about running a gallery? It's certainly not what you're used to. I used to think running a business was running a business, and that was it. But about this, I feel that um, I like the idea of a challenge. I was looking for something that could give me some more time off. Spend time with you. I'll be able to do that. I don't know what I would have done without you all these weeks. Somehow when we're together, it seems like all of this makes sense. <laughs> Is it early? <laughs> it's not that early. Amazing how time flies when you have a good time. First, I demand an explanation. Then you can work out an apology. And blood. Uh, bright, uh, bruised flesh from the looks of thing. What happened to you? Nothing. Uh, how are you? Well, I've kind of lost track of how I am. Well, you should ask Liz. She's no better than I do. Been busy, huh? Uh, well, whatever you consider busy, you can just double it. Hmm. Your yeah, place was pretty good out there. Oh, yeah, right. The, the, the repairing job yeah. out there. Yeah, it was pretty good. I'll have to get Liz to give me a guided tour. Man, feels good to be back. Yeah. Why don't you come back? Yesterday. Yeah, uh, you want to talk to me about it? No, well, there's nothing to tell. I just had a uh, few details I had to clear up. Right, Melissa said. Uh, Melissa? Yeah, she came by and told uh, me. Look, Jamie, I don't know what Melissa may have told well, you, but you got to All she just... told me was that you had gone to look after Jerry and Blaine. I'm not interfering, and nor was Melissa. So, uh, how are Jerry and Blaine, anyway? Are they back, too? Yeah. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. And now, the continuing story of another world. Hi, Liz. Uh, could you do a big favor for me and get a couple of coffees in here? Black? Yeah, black. Black. Thank you, Liz. I'll pay you back. <laughs> okay. Bye. Well, with the coffee consumption around here, I should buy shares in Brazil. <laughs> You see Mac? No, I wanted to see you first. Any particular reason? Yeah, I think I may, may need some help. All right, you name it, you got it. I don't think it's going to be quite that simple. I guess that you and, well, probably half of Bay City already know that Blaine and Jerry left town to get away from George Scott. Yeah, not exactly a well-kept secret. <laughs> yeah, well, Jerry got sick. It was an infection from his uh, accident. Anyway, uh, I got elected to uh, take the medicine down to him that Rick Holloway got for him. Rick? I didn't know he was involved. Uh, yeah, well, he's not. At least, not any more than that. You know, the less the better. Anyway, you know, I told you that Jordan Scott and his buddies are real pros. Right. Well, I figured out that Blaine and Jerry wouldn't be able to get away from them on their own, so I stayed on and helped them, or at least tried to. So what happened? 
Well, it's really more a case of what didn't happen. You know, the bottom line is we didn't get away. There's uh, really much more to know. Uh, not if you want to stay healthy, anyway. Sandy, what is this, a gangster movie? I mean, really, I, I can take care of myself. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. Uh, that's what I get for it, a free facial. No, Sammy, it's not a... It's not a gangster movie. It's a real thing. Blaine and Jerry are back in one piece, and that's something, at least, and they're not in any immediate danger. What do you mean, immediate? I mean, are they in danger or not? Jamie, listen to me. For reasons which I can't go into, Blaine is still in trouble. Now, I, I don't want her to get hurt. It's just that she cannot see Jerry. She can't talk to him, nothing. So why are you telling me all this? Well, when Jerry gets back to town, if he isn't already, he's got to know to stay away from Blaine. You can help pass that message along loud and clear. It'd also be nice to know how Blaine is doing from time to time. Well, sure, but I don't know where I fit in. Well, I mean, you know her. You're her ex-husband. Uh, it wouldn't be at all suspicious or unusual for you to, you know, check up on her occasionally, you know. No, I don't. I mean, what, what exactly am I supposed to be looking for? I just want to know that she's okay. Well, you don't exactly give much away, do you? Uh, How you can explain your face? Oh, I don't know. I guess I'll tell him I walk into a door or something. It's really not important. But I'll tell you one thing that is important. Well, when I left, I got some money from Mac alone. I'm, I plan on paying him back. Okay, no problem. No, it's just that I don't want him to know what I used it for. Let's see. What did you use it for? Sorry. Look, I'm, it's just I can't deal with all these questions. You know, I mean, it's tough enough explaining how I look, that coupled with the fact that I was gone so long when I only asked for a couple of days off. It's just... You know. Well, listen, uh, if it's that important to you, I'll, I'll handle it. Just uh, you know, stay out of Max's way for a while, if you can, for as long as you can. And uh, I'll tell him that I knew you were going to be gone longer, but I forgot to tell him. Just... Uh, Another one of my uh, setbacks. What? Never mind that. I'll, I'll handle it for you. Great. Thanks, man. Sorry, right, you... the coffee took so long, Jamie, but the machine was on the fritz, and you know I'm not... Ma Sandy, you're back. Yeah, I'm back. What happened to your face? Uh, well, actually, I, uh, I walked into a door. A door? That doesn't look like Thank the imprint of a door. Thank you very much for the coffee. There. Was, uh... You're welcome. Thanks. Look, I know you haven't told me everything, and I guess you can't, but uh, if you ever want to, uh, well, I'm here to listen. You're upset about today's editorial? Does that come as some kind of surprise to you? Or did you think I'd come in here to order reprints to hand out for the mayoral campaign? I don't know what you're talking about, Zachary. This! Listen to me, the editorial that I happen to write dealt with the bureaucracy in the welfare department. Now, I know that may not be scintillating stuff to you, but it had no mention of the DA, his department, or his mayoral candidacy. I'd like to know what in the world you're bursting into my office for like that. The welfare department. Maybe you need a trip to the education department so you can learn to read the editorial that appeared in the morning edition of today's Daily Ledger. Now, you are the editor of the Daily Ledger, aren't you? Well, then read it. I don't understand. Well, I and your other readers certainly do. It's called libel. Also, character assassination. Zachary, I didn't write this editorial. Oh, come on. Don't give me that. If you didn't write it, then someone on your staff did. And they have, in effect, linked me with organized crime, accused me of running up gambling debts, and then have insinuated, because of those alleged gambling debts, I'm not fulfilling my office as district attorney. Have I left anything out? Now, Mr. Lyons. 
If that editorial isn't retracted on the front page of your newspaper, along with a profound, profuse official apology, I'm going to file suit immediately. And then you'll see just how effective your district attorney can be. Okay, you guys, come on, knock it off. Look at the mess you made. Come on, quit it. Listen, I have to get to work. Now, I haven't got time for this kind of horsing around. Okay? Eat. Eat. I don't care who started it. Oh, my goodness, what a mess this is. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good well, good morning. afternoon. Nice of you to show up. Welcome home. I thought you were going to come home last night. Well, I, I was. I was planning to be home last night. Well, what happened? Well, I, I needed to spend some time with Mitch. I'm not going to try to stop you from seeing Mitch, but this sharing a house is a two-way deal, you know. I know that. I have to get up early in the morning. I have to go down to the shop. And I, this morning was my early day. I had to call Clarice. She had to change her whole schedule around. I mean, I, I, she had to go down and open the shop. All right, Mom, I know that. I just have a couple of commitments now. It's very difficult to work them out together. Oh, taking care of grandchildren and uh, running a shop, those, those are not commitments? I needed to spend some time with Mitch. Look, I'm here all day with the children, all morning long and all afternoon long. I don't have any time to see him then. I thought at least I could have some time with him in the, in, at night. Yeah, well, nights turn into mornings, and mornings mean brushing hair and scrubbing faces and getting kids ready for school and packing lunches and making... The way you feel about Mitch isn't healthy. I love him. What's unhealthy about that? It can't be healthy if you let it get in the way of other important things. Mom, look, I left the kids with you. You said that that was going to be all right. Now, they couldn't have been in better hands. I know that, Rachel. I'm just beginning to wonder if I weren't around, how you and Mitch would manage to see each other. What really concerns me, Philip, is why you would allow this to be published in the first place. I mean, anybody can see the libelous nature of this material. Yes, I agree. You put the ledger on record accusing our district attorney of being linked to organized crime. Yes, well, I'm aware of the effect that the article has on the newspaper as well as on Zachary Colton. I just want to know what is the basis that you use to make this accusation. I mean, we've got to have some very hard facts, or we are in very deep water. I understand that. I just can't understand why you would risk publishing this sort of thing in the first place and writing it yourself. Mac, uh, I didn't write that editorial. You didn't write it, but you're the editor. You've written all of them up till now. No, no, no. The, the article that was supposed to run in that spot was about the bureaucracy within the welfare department. Uh, that article was done up in advance by me to be run in my absence. That's what was supposed to be in that spot. Well, who's responsible for this one, then? I'm sorry, Mac. My staff tells me that Jamie pulled my editorial. He ran his instead. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm fine. It's strange to be back. Brian, thanks again for dropping everything and coming to New York to get me. Oh, it was a pleasure, Jerry. Just knowing that you were all right. When I woke up in that hospital not knowing what had happened, it was such a relief when they told me that uh, you were on the way. You no, know, everything that happened with Glenn and Sandy just seems like a nightmare. You still don't know what happened to them? Oh, no one heard a word before I left, but we'll check on it as soon as we get back to town. Maybe they're all right. You know, it's better that they went off on their own. But I was becoming more and more ill and just holding them back. Well, we'll talk about all this later. Right now, I've got to get you home, or I won't be keeping my word to those doctors. You know what they said? Lots of rest. You won't have to convince me that flight knocked it out of me. Right, let's see if we can find my car. Oh, Brian, you know that uh, pawn ticket that either Blaine or Sandy must have left in the hotel room? Did you check up on it for me? 
So I checked on it and bought it back. It's here in my suitcase. Well, what was it? Uh, well, it was a gold, uh, gold chain bracelet, I think. Uh, I, I'll give it to you in my bag. <laughs> gold chain? And I don't remember Blaine having one. But maybe she did. Nothing surprises me. Nothing? Well, oh, pity. I was uh, hoping something would. Well, it'd have to be something very special. Well, uh, judge for yourself. Welcome home, I want this in triplicate. Back you want to see me? Oh, yes. I'll be with you in just a minute. Uh, what about these contracts? Have Brian look that over. All right. And these? Oh, I'll take care of this. Now, is there uh, anything else? No, thank you, Liz. Oh, by the way, Mac, I forgot to tell you, Sandy's back. Oh, really? I haven't seen him. Uh, he came in this morning. I, I saw him, and uh, everything's okay. Thank you, Liz. While you were seeing things this morning, Jamie, did you happen to see a copy of today's edition of the ledger? Sure, I glanced at it. Well, I'll assume that you also read the editorial, because as I understand it, you're the one that wrote it. Yes, why? As I understand it, you also pulled Philip's editorial to run your own without Philip having any knowledge of this. Well, Mac, I'm the publisher. Well, that's the job you gave me. As part of my job, I have the right to run editorials. Now, Philip and I discussed this from the start. It was agreed. Yes, as publisher, you do have that right, but you don't have a right to abuse the privilege. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Jamie, you have accused the district attorney of this city for, of deliberately failing to prosecute Jordan Scott for various and sundry crimes, allegedly, because Colton owes Scott a debt of some kind. Yes, that's right, a gambling debt. Now, Colton is heavily in debt at the arena. You have also, in print, directly linked Scott with the accidents, as we call them, at the dock site, also with the bombings here at the complex. And all of these crimes have been deliberately overlooked, as you wrote it, by Colton. Yes, that's all true, Matt. Now, Colton is heavily in debt with Scott, now, which may account for Colton's refusal to look into Jerry Grove's hit and run. But, I, you know, I didn't say that. Well, thank heavens for small favors. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Jamie, do you have any proof to back up these accusations. I mean, solid, admissible, hardcore proof. Proof? Proof, yes, in case this becomes a court case, which it probably will. Do you have any well-substantiated evidence, proof that will hold up in a court of law? In a court? A court of law, yes. I'm not sure. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not sure. You mean to say that you written an editorial libeling our district attorney on the basis of mere supposition? It's not supposition. Now, I know that Colton is tied in with Scott, and I know that Scott is tied in with organized crime. All right, Jamie, tell me, how do you know this? I have sources, Mac. I overheard specific conversations at the arena pertaining to Colton's gambling debt. Oh, Jamie, that's not nearly good enough evidence to print libel against the district attorney. Now, Philip has already been over here telling me that Colton's on his back, and Colton's office has already called me personally and threatened to sue. He feels, and I think very rightly, that we have endangered his aspirations to be mayor. Good. Good? It is not good, Jamie, and you are not listening to me unless you've got some hard evidence, and I mean plenty of it. To back us up on this, we are facing a million-dollar libel suit. Mac, I'm sure there are records at the arena proving Colton's debts. Well, I wouldn't be too sure of it if I were you, because Philip has already contacted the arena, and not surprisingly, the arena maintains Colton owes them exactly nothing. And you can be sure this is a story they're going to give in court. Mac, I know I'm right. Now, I know that Scott is behind everything that's been going on. And Colton is protecting Scott. I know that. Jamie, knowing it and proving in a court what you know 
are two different things. Can't you understand that? I assure you that my board members understand it. I've been on the phone with them all day, and they are very, very upset about this, to put it mildly, about this whole situation. But, Matt, I'm right. Now, I know that. You haven't heard a word I've been saying. Being right and proving in court that you are right is something very different, and I don't believe you can prove this in court. So what's going to happen? I shudder to think, but I do know I'm going to have to get together with Brian, and some way we're going to have to figure out how we can keep this thing from blowing up in our faces. So the rumor's true. My kid sister's back in town. He... You okay? Yeah. You sure? Oh, yeah. yeah. I've been so worried about you. I'm okay, I'm okay. I'm just glad to be home. I, uh... I'm not much of a traveler. Why don't you tell me the truth? What'd Jordan do to you? Nothing. What makes you think he did? Come off it, Blaine. I'm your big brother. Jordan's been burning inside ever since you left. I don't believe that you can come waltzing back into this town and pretend everything's okay. Well, you, you have to believe it because it's the truth. That's a bunch of garbage, and you know it is. Larry, you don't know what goes on between Jordan and me. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he wasn't mad at me, really. He was just really worried because Jerry had taken me away. Actually, I should be quite flattered. Oh, yeah, I guess that's why you've been running for the past two weeks. And that's why Jordan's had his gorillas out looking for you. Larry, please, don't do this. And baby, why don't you give me some straight answers? I'm really concerned for you. I am giving you straight answers. No, you're not. You're telling me that everything's just sweetness and light between you and Jordan. You're like head over heels happy to be back with him. That's it. Exactly. I'm not buying that. Well, look, at least I know somebody will tell me the truth. Who? Jerry. I, I, he'll tell me what happened. Larry, Jerry doesn't know anything. Honestly, he doesn't know anything. Come on, Blaine. I know I can get more information out of him than I got out of you. Please, don't. Bring Jerry into this, okay? But what do you mean, don't bring him into it? The guy's already involved. Baby, look, I can't stand around and watch this happen to you. I'm going to do what I think's right. What are you going to do? I don't know. Larry. I, I, look, I just have some ideas of my own, all right? Please let it be, okay? Jerry is safe as long as you let it be. Don't make it happen all over again. Seems like years since I've seen this place it's before. <sighs> you know, I wondered if I'd ever see it again. And now it feels strange. How so? What's well, like coming home to a place that's never really been your home? Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, I am the life of the party. It's a little tired. Maybe I should go? Oh, I am not that tired. Come over here. Just try keeping me away. I missed you so much. How about you? Did you miss me? You think that question needs answering? Of course I missed you. Good. I was afraid. I missed you, Kit, really. I know. But... Say it. I had a crazy fear that, you know, being with Blaine and all these old feelings would come up. Have you heard anything about either Blaine or Sandy? No. Oh, why don't I ask around? Maybe somebody's picked something up. Yeah. You're off the word, aren't you? Well, I spend weeks on the road with those two characters, and then suddenly they vanish into thin air. Yeah, I'm curious as to where they are, if they're all right. Well, I think 
a little more than curious. Yeah, I'm concerned they took good care of me. You know, Kit, if it wouldn't have been for Sandy, I doubt if I would be here or anywhere alive. Why did you split up? It wasn't a choice, at least not on my part. Blaine and I were alone in a hotel room. Sandy had gone to get some more medication for me. We waited and waited, but he never showed up. Finally, I guess I uh, must have fallen asleep. When I woke up, Blaine was gone. Did someone take her? That's what I don't know. The room was empty. A couple of cops were there, ready to take me into protective custody. Yeah. Then I must have passed out when I woke up in the hospital. A nurse told me that Brian had been notified and was on his way to bring me back to Bay City. How did Brian find out? The police called him. You know, he says he hasn't seen or heard anything about either Blaine or Sandy. Every source he inquires into, it just turns up as zero. You know, either they're doing a darn good job of hiding out, or, uh, or Jordan got to them. Listen, uh, now why don't you let me do a little research? Maybe I can come up with some information. Well, who from? I mean, who else knows what happened? Well, Joey, for example. I mean, he didn't know a lot, but he did know that Sandy and Rick were involved. He was the only person in Bay City that I could talk to. Must have been lonely for you. Joey and I helped each other through. Joey was worried about Blaine. He still is. Maybe Blaine's contacted him. Do you think you could reach him? Give it a try. Mm. Good. Maybe uh, he can come over for a minute and tell us what he knows. Where is that wonderful brother of ours, anyway? Don't talk like that, okay? Danny's downtown seeing about a job interview. Job interview? Oh, Clarice, come on. Don't tell me he's thinking about staying here. Well, why not? Here's a nice place as any. Oh, great. Great. No sooner do I get settled than Big Brother comes in and nudges me out. Lee, Bay City's big enough for both of you. Well, if he has to move here, I may as well move out. What is with you two anyway? I mean, why can't you just let bygones be bygones? I think of him like, like a friend. It's very easy for you to say, Clarice. You don't have him breathing down your neck. Looking over your shoulder, checking up on your, your grades, your girlfriend, your general lifestyle. Don't you think you're overplaying it? No, Clarice, I don't. You know, I moved away from Wisconsin to get away from him, Clarice. I, I, I needed space. I needed to put distance between him and I. I had to think things out for myself. I never dreamed he'd follow me. Lee, he's not following you. Well, it sure seems like it. it look, there's nothing to hold him back in Wisconsin anymore, especially since he and Suzanne have split. Maybe he's lonely. Maybe he wants some company or his family. <laughs> So Denny has indelibly etched upon my mind. I'm his family, so he has the right to intrude upon my life. I wish you wouldn't look at it like that. I mean, as far as I can see, Denny is, is trying to make a new start. Well, there are plenty of other places in America for him to do that. He just wants to harass me. You're wrong about that, Lee. I think he's changed. Well, I know him a lot better than you do, Clarice. And he may be able to fool you into believing that, but he do I don't buy it for a minute. He hasn't changed at all, Clarice. We had a talk last night. He is as proud of you as I am. Oh, yeah, so proud. I bet she's just dying to rip into me about hockey or, no, no, or history or anything at all. No, no, Lee. He admitted last night that he's been too hard on you in the past. He actually said that? Yes, that's what he said. So don't come down so heavy on him. I mean, you have to try to... Two? Look, this world is big enough for the two of you. I mean, you just got to try a bit of understanding. You never know. Maybe Denny's turned over a new leaf. Maybe he has. Yes, yes, I'm quite aware of the damages that can result from the publication of such an editorial. No, I assure you, I've already spoken to him, and he won't. Oh, no, I have no intention of ever letting it happen again. Yes. Yes, I completely agree. Yes, thank you so much for your advice. Right, goodbye.
Yes, Liz. Oh, all right. Send him in. Mr. Corey, uh, you want to see me? Come on in, Sandy. Mr. Corey, I, Jamie told me that you were in, but uh, that he'd seen you. Yes, sir. Well, welcome back. I'm glad you're here in one piece. I'm sorry I was away so long. It just took a little longer than I expected. No, no. Don't worry about that. I just wish Jamie had told me that you'd called in several times to extend your leave of absence. Oh, well, I, I, actually, I know Mr. he's got a lot of things on his mind, so that's understandable, too. Mr. Corey, uh, about the money I borrowed from you, I, I want to pay it back as soon as I possibly can. If it's all right with you, I'd like to uh, arrange with Liz to have payroll deduct a little bit each week until it's all taken care of. Fine. Any way you want to arrange it will be okay. That's not what I want to talk to you. Now that you are back, you may be aware that uh, a few changes have been made. Mrs. Randolph has been uh, named as publisher of Bravo now. Since you were absent, we've had to hire someone else as a full-time administrative assistant for her. Oh, I, I certainly understand. Mr. <laughs> no, no, I don't expect you do. You haven't been fired. As a matter of fact, now you have your choice of two jobs. You can stay on with Brava, as you were before, helping out Cecile and Pat in any way you can. Or you can go for another job. Although I must say I haven't spoken to Jamie about this yet. Well, what is it? It would be a new position I'm just creating. Administrative assistant to our chief editor, who is Jamie, of course. But uh, I thought Jamie was publisher of Brava. Yes, he was. But when we added the newspaper to our holdings... He had more work than he could handle. So, anyway, now I would like for him to have the best assistance he can get. How about it? Well, you said that you haven't uh, spoken to Jamie about this yet. No, first I wanted to know which of the two jobs you wanted. Well, Mr. Corey, you know, I would really love working with Jamie, but I don't want him to feel that I'm in any way stepping in on his turf. So if it's all right with you, I'd rather wait until you'd spoken to him before I give you my decision. And uh, that's all I know. They're both back in Bay City. And, you know, Sandy's all right, except for looking a little beat up. And Blaine? Not seen. Not her. Well, has anyone seen her? Yeah, uh, Sandy has. Uh, he said that uh, I should keep my distance from her. Great, huh? Look, where is she? Back with Prince Charming. Back with Jordan. Oh, I, that's crazy. Sandy must have gotten it wrong. No, he seemed quite sure about what he was talking about. She would never go back to him, not of her own free will. Listen, don't get upset. Honey, I'm sorry, but these things do happen. She lived with him for a long time. She may have changed her mind. Look, you don't understand. She doesn't love him. She never did. She just got all tied up in this, and it, she couldn't. You all right? You sure she's back with Jordan? Then she'll probably be working at the connection. You're not thinking of going to visit her, are you? No, not tonight. Oh, not ever. Because if you remember, that's how this whole thing started. Or have you forgotten that? No, Joey, I haven't forgotten. Joey's right. You've got to stay away from Blaine. Yeah, sure. Just a minute. What? Cecile said I'd have a 99% chance of finding you here. I kind of wondered what the other 1% was, though. Cecile? Yeah, I called the penthouse and she said it was uh, highly probable that you'd be working late. And so you are. So I am. Come on in, Rick. Yeah. I gather this is... Um, this is an every-night occurrence, huh? Not every night. Most? Look, I could do with the distraction of your visit without a lecture. You didn't take I've it. had my share of lectures today. Sorry, Jamie. Don't listen to me. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I've just 
been read out by everyone today, and I'm taking it out on you. So I gather. It's been a bad day. Oh. Listen, you want to go get some to eat? Uh, no, thank you. I've, I've already had a sandwich. I've got some work to do. For dinner? <sighs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to lecture you. All right, all right. Uh, I could do with some coffee, though. Coffee? Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Just coffee. I wasn't asking. I know. I just, uh, I thought I'd let you know. I could uh, tell by your eyes that uh, you were straight. Yep. Yeah, they don't look like two black marbles anymore. How long? Well, a couple of days. That's good. Good, that's what you say. My nerves are telling me otherwise. Well, nobody said it was going to be an easy cure. Well, I know, but this is tough, Rick. I mean, I have a headache all the time. I, my neck hurts. I can't get any sleep. <sighs> well, I guess... Uh, <laughs> I know about it. Yeah, I kept telling myself that uh, another week or two and it'll pass. I had to repeat that over and over to myself like a religious phrase, but it worked. Or something did, because eventually it did pass. Uh, I hope so. <sighs> so, uh, remember, it's just, uh, it's just the first week that hurts. Right. Well, hurts, uh... Hertz happens to be an understatement. So tell me, what made you opt for long life insanity? Well, I had a talk with uh, someone who helped me see what I was doing to myself. I realized that uh, the only way to repair the damage was to get unhooked. So I'm trying. Very hard. It's not easy, but then what's that phrase? If it's easy, it's not worth it. Sounds like a good puritanical phrase. Listen, if you need somebody to talk to, I, I think I might be a good sounding board. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate that. It's okay. Well, I'm sure you didn't come creeping in the dark up the hallway. It's just to check on the state of my health. What's up? No, no, I wanted to, I wanted to talk to you. You know, I remember I asked you to be an usher at my wedding. Sure. Just wanted to get everything straight about what you're going to be wearing. Well, uh, tuxedo? No, not quite. No? Hmm. Well, oh, is it going to be different? <laughs> you going to like it? Maybe. <laughs> you know, I was wondering if you were going to make good on that rain check. Rain check? Don't you remember? Now, that's what I like. A guy who remembers the important pieces of his life with such startling speed. Uh, look, can I have a clue? It's the night of your accident. That's probably why I don't remember. I think I have blocked out almost all of that part of my past. and Maybe it's for the better. Well, this part isn't because... It involves me. <laughs> mm, well, then it's definitely worth remembering. We had a date that night. And when I came to see you at the hospital, I was trying to avoid crying by making small talk. And I told you that you could have canceled. <laughs> that you didn't have to go to so much trouble. And I took that opportune moment to ask you for a rain check. And I told you any time. Just the same as you did Last time I touched you Here I am Close to getting tangled up Inside the thought of you Do you love her As much as I love him Will that love be strong when old feelings stir again Looks like we made it Helped each other on the way To another life Looks like we made it For I thought so till today Did 
Well, I can't get this cat so easily. I still got a few lives to go. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> oh, well, it's uh, nothing that you should concern yourself with. They beat you again. Yeah, well, skin heals, Melissa. So you're lucky, huh? It could have been much worse. Yeah, that's what I always say. You tell me everything. Well, that should be easy, because there's uh, not much to tell. I mean, Jordan's men did what they were supposed to do. They found us, and they brought us back. And? And <laughs> nothing. That's all there is to it. If you don't tell me, it's because you can't, right? When Jordan just brings you back, and we're all supposed to forget it, just pretend it never happened, right? Just live happily ever after. That's right, Melissa. That's exactly what we're supposed to do. Somebody sold out somewhere. You weren't going to tell me, are you? No, Melissa. Not this time. Join us each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Another World.